Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to January 30th's Gateway API meeting. Um, just a reminder to anybody who has not been here before or a reminder in general that we are governed by the Kubernetes Code of Conduct boils down to please be nice to one another. Um, we do not, we have a fair number of people here, but we don't have much on the agenda. So we'll start with what we do have on the agenda, but then we'll open it up for general discussion. And if we don't get much, it's okay if we close early today. But uh, if you do have something you really want to talk about, please run in uh, into the doc and put it on the agenda. I will start sharing my screen. We can go over what we got. All right. Uh, so I'll actually see who put this here, but somebody wanted to talk today about Stunner. Yeah, sorry, it was me. I'm Gabor, and I forgot to give my name. Uh, I'm actually, sorry. I, I announced this uh, GIF implementation sometime like uh, at the uh, middle of December. And then uh, people were generally interested, and then we discussed that maybe we could give a very short introductory talk on this. I think what is maybe the most exotic implementation of the Gateway API, because this one is for WebRTC. So it's all about audio, video, RTP, UDP. I'm not entirely sure, but maybe we are maybe one of the main users of UDP route um around so uh if you if you if you give me like 15 minutes i try to very quickly walk you through why we need a media gate favor about what we about it is after all and if you have questions i would be really happy to discuss sure mm -hmm. is this something where you want to share your screen or yeah i would it? but i guess i don't have the rights i can give you the rights uh, it's probably a better way to do it, but I think this will let you do it. Go ahead. Uh, let me see. Oh. I guess you, you're supposed to see this now, no? Yeah, we can see it, or I can see it. Okay, yeah, so welcome. Uh, I'm uh, actually Gabor, so I'm this guy. Uh, yeah, video connection is 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 like really unbelievable today, but I'm like looking like this. <laughs> uh, and uh, I apologies, this is midnight over here in Central Europe, so I'm not the sharpest. Uh, imaginable, but I try to be very quick and, and not bore you to hell. I'm uh, I'm, so Gabor... <laughs> I'm Gabor. I'm Gabor I hold a PhD in uh, uh, algorithms and systems uh, uh, science, mostly doing academic and in industry research for like 20 years now. I'm senior researcher at uh, an university and also I'm working for a major telco vendor. So I'm mostly doing uh, algorithms and system stuff for, for telcos. Uh, and I'm also the co-founder and the CTO of SNMP. Uh, this is a a small startup we did just to, to do consulting work and web RTC and Kubernetes um, professional services for uh, mostly for this gateway that I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm mostly a, a high performance uh, um, software networking person. So we, we, in, in, in our academic career, uh, we did quite a lot of work on fast software switching, like imagine 20 million packets per second on a single core. Uh, uh, we still hold the record for uh, for this. Uh, uh, of course, you can imagine that when you are with a telco and like serving millions of users uh, from like two or three servers, then you really want to churn out all the the the, the last bits of performance from uh, from your from your hardware. So so we are doing lots of lots of low level DPDK and driver uh, uh, hacking stuff, but also we are doing algorithms. Um, just a short note on what's uh, what's on the agenda. What's WebRTC? I I guess most of you might have heard about this, but maybe a quick reminder will will be uh, uh, useful. 
But the main question is why we need a WebRTC media gateway for, for, for Kubernetes and why this thing might be important to you uh, for, for the gateway API and the SIG network, uh, uh, if at all. Uh, some, some, some lessons that we learned in the end and then um, Q&A. So like WebRTC is web real-time communication. So uh, this is an open source API. Uh, for browser-based real-time communication. What, what we mean by real-time communication is real-time communication is exactly what we are doing right now. Okay, so so um, my, my microphone and my camera is producing the, the video and the audio streams right now, and you want to consume it right away. The end-to-end -end latency should be around like below 200 milliseconds because uh, when we actually just pass that, that, that magic deadline or, or like, like latency, bound then uh, people st start to cross talk um but it's like so webrtc is essentially a javascript api as a fairly usable and, and the consumable one but but under the hood it's basically just voice over ip uh from the 2000s uh, hidden behind this modern api so basically voice over ip repackaged uh, 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 to look like a modern service, but underneath this this whole thing, it's still the uh, voice over IP. Now, the the first drafts and then the first RFCs came out when I think Google was not a thing, when we didn't even have a cloud. So this 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 word has not been invented yet. Uh, uh, Sun Microsystems was still a, 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 a big company. Uh, everyone wanted to do Java back in those days. So today it's mostly for video conferencing. Uh, now Zoom infamously doesn't use WebRTC, but everyone else from Google Meet and Discord and, and Microsoft Teams, everyone is doing that. So if you look at this, if, if you see this little uh, pop-up in your browser that, that, that an application wants to use your microphone and your camera, that, that's a telltale sign that WebRTC is uh, uh, actually just doing its work uh, in the background. Uh, but there are lots of lots of new use cases. We, we have lots of uh, uh, users from desk, desktop streaming uh, and the cloud gaming area. Live streaming is becoming a thing, so media ingestion. Uh, but mostly, mostly video conferencing. So if if if, if you want to to have like the the, the typical application for WebRTC, then, then then that's exactly what we are doing right now. Um, the main idea is to do this peer to peer. So this was the original voice over IP use case. Uh, uh, you have two browsers and then you actually just directly connect the two. This thing is starting to go out of fashion today because like you can imagine that doing peer-to-peer -peer connection between two users, which are typically behind several layers of nets is a very, very difficult, difficult thing to do. But once you actually uh, want to do something more complex, uh, uh, processing on the media streams that, that are just exchanged between the clients. Like, for instance, you just pass the two-party calls deadline and start to, uh, or like the boundary and, and, and start to do a multi-party video call uh, or a, a cloud gaming session or desktop streaming, then you will definitely need a media server in the middle um, that will do some media processing. Uh, and ev like everything that you do on in a latency sensitive matter, then, manner when you have to process live audio and video streams uh, that's extremely cpu intensive so kubernetes is a perfect fit to host these media servers like there, there are pools of literally like tens or uh, uh, dozens of media servers uh, uh, running on these very very high-end uh, servers uh, that actually just do live transcoding and, and trans sizing and, and repacketizing of media streams uh, uh, so that uh, we can enjoy this sort of moose video conferencing experience that we are doing right now. Now, when you actually want to minimize latency, you have to design everything from scratch for latency. So this means no HTTP and no TCP. Uh, so this is the first thing that we drop. And then we introduce this super exotic media transport protocol stack, which is basically real-time protocol. This is our layer seven protocol. Uh, on top of UDP. And UDP is this red herring. So when you see UDP, you start to feel the pain. Uh, UDP is connectionless. Okay, so, uh, and actually RTP sort of like, so uh, the same. The problem is that when you actually set up a, a media connection, 
uh, at the media server at the client, there is no connection state. You do not mean there is no like nothing like the TCP handshake or something like that when the clients and the server just enter into this negotiation when when they discuss the the, the various parameters and the ports and the IP that they are going to use for the connection. There is nothing like that. So the, the very strange fact is that the only way to associate a packet, like in a server or a client, uh, we get a packet, uh, and then we want to know which caller actually sent or, or like which video stream this uh, this packet belongs to. The only thing we can uh, use to decide is the source IP and the port. So that's the only two uh, uh, header fields in, in in the protocol stack that you kind of like can expect. Uh, to point you to uh, to a particular caller, uh, and then you have to do this association, this decision packet by packet. So there are, there is no connection state uh, maintained there. Actually, there is, but uh, this, this is this is beyond discussion here. Now, when you actually try to just associate a user their IP and port, this how it, this happens is that uh, before you actually set up a call, there is a signaling session where. With the, uh, with the assistance of a signaling server, the client and the, and the media server discuss uh, or negotiate the, the, the IP addresses and ports that they are going to use to send packets. Okay, so the, like, I, I, I guess I'm now behind the net, so I guess my computer uh, told Zoom servers that I'm going to just send you packets from like 10.0.0.1, that's a private IP. Uh, any middle box in the media pass, and then I bet there is going to be at least one middle box in, in any media pass in, in today's internet. Anything that modifies the layer three and layer four headers, like network address translators and layer uh, load balancers, this basically kill WebRTC media connections. You cannot do that. Uh, so there is a very complex protocol suite, mostly stun and turn. These are two protocols, and a very complex workflow, ICE and ICE Lite which help uh, WebRTC clients to deal with net traversal. But the basic problem that we are trying to solve is that you know that Kubernetes networking is effectively built on nets and, and, and load balancers. Okay, so just sending a WebRTC uh, media stream uh, 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 via a cluster IP uh, Kubernetes service will actually break the connection because the cluster IP is essentially a destination net. So you kind of like like change the uh, uh, the destination IP, and that's enough uh, uh, to kill WebRTC. So just ingesting UDP and RTP media into a Kubernetes cluster is already a major pain. Okay, because because whatever you do, there will be several layers of net from the client side uh, uh, net to the 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 cloud load balancer, and then the node port, and then the cluster IP, and whatnot. And until uh, your packet reaches a media server that's deployed into a, 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 a Kubernetes pod. So the main reason uh, for the existence of Sun Stunner is to help clients uh, or help servers ingesting media traffic, WebRTC media into a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, but once we actually have a, a gateway that, that, that processes WebRTC traffic uh, and does not traverse, we can bolt on several very useful features on top of that, like the usual uh, gateway uh, uh, functionality, mostly routing, so request routing, uh, security, and monitoring. So these are the uh, the, the typical services that a standard does for you, but this is just uh, uh, like specifically for WebRTC media. Uh, the data plane is a standard compliant turn server. So this is turn is a net traversal protocol from the ITF, all clients know how to talk to a turn server, uh, so they know how to talk to Stunner. Uh, and the control plane is, of course, the gateway API. Okay, so basically, Stunner is a, is a gateway that exposes uh, this, this very strange protocol uh, uh, called turn uh, to clients, uh, but inside uh, uh, the cluster, uh, it actually just does UDP. Mm, the workflow is like, I think, the standard stuff in the gateway API, gateway class. Okay, you register uh, your gateway class with the controller. Mm. This points uh, uh, to a gateway config through the parameters ref. The gateway config gives the, the general configuration for turn, which is basically mostly just the log level uh, and a couple of uh, authentication credentials um, currently in plain text, but there are lots of lots of different uh, uh, 
uh, uh, authentication methods that we support. So this is only just the simplest. So this is the usual gateway config stuff. Uh, now, this is the way you define your turn server listeners. Uh, in this uh, 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 example, we have a UDP listener, so a turn server that listens on top of UDP, the standard turn, uh, turn, porn, uh, turn port. And then we also have a TLS listener because TLS, uh, turn also runs on top of TLS. This is in order to allow clients uh, uh, connecting uh, from behind very, very restrictive enterprise uh, uh, firewalls to still be able to talk to, to turn servers. So we can also terminate the uh, uh, TLS connections, but it's, so this is also the usual stuff. Uh, and media routing is, is actually just uh, done uh, through UDP route objects. So you define a UDP route, like usually uh, you attach it to, the, to, to your gateway and then you name the media server service uh, as the backend. And this, this is basically everything you have to do uh, uh, to expose your media servers to your clients in a way so that they still be able to call the media server despite that. I don't know, at least four or five layers of nets that, uh, uh, on the media path. Okay, the, the usual stuff, Stunner automatically exposes the gateway listeners over the load balancer service. So let's call this the, the IP address, like Stunner IP. Uh, and then the only thing you have to do on the, on the browser side is to define this very short snippet uh, of JavaScript where you actually define your RTC peer connection. This is the main uh, 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 API call to set up a video or an audio connection from a browser to a, a server. And then you give this ice config as a parameter and the ice config is essentially just uh, uh, telling the server, uh, telling the RTC peer connection to connect through this turn protocol listener, uh, which we've just exposed uh, uh, from Kubernetes. And basically that's all. Uh, this is fully compatible with WebRTC, uh, uh, the, the, the WebRTC stack today, so you don't need to do anything uh, uh, apart from these two or three uh, uh, lines of JavaScript on the client side uh, to support this, and it's fully uh, compatible also with servers. On the server side, we, still, we need zero uh, uh, modification, and this just, just works. Uh, the status now is that we have a custom turn server, which is basically this is written written in Go. And um, if you if you actually uh, have to work with WebRTC, I, I can only just uh, 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 recommend or, or just 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 uh, yeah use Python. It's amazing, one of the best and code bases that I've ever worked with. It's performant. It's 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 nice. It's readable. So it's Go. Uh, the control plane is a partial gateway API implementation. I'm going to just tell you very shortly why it's, it's a partial implementation. We have like an active community, a small startup backing the, um, the gateway, and we already have a couple of users deploying uh, Stunner into, into production. We are at uh, beta. Uh, I think GA will, will happen uh, um, sometimes early summer. Um, the future is performance optimization. Like I, I told you, we did like 20 million packets per second on a single core. Now we are doing 30,000 packets per second on a thing, single core. We know how to make this super fast. Uh, we know how to do an eBPF kernel upload for, uh, for handling turn. Uh, so we are going to enter into the multi million packets per second realm. This is doable for turn because turn is UDP. Uh, EDPF is much, and no float is much worse fit for TCP, but for, for UDP, this, at least this thing is simple. The lessons, and this, this, I'm going to close this with, uh, with these short slides. Mm, the Gateway API, we found this a very, very comfortable and nice target to, uh, 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 or a nice API to target. So it's, it's definitely versatile enough to abstract even this very, very exotic use cases. So even though this is, it is not TCP, it is not HTTP, it still somehow very nicely abstracts uh, uh, UDP and RTP with WebRTC media. Problem is like, like we are doing two things at the same time. We are teaching our users to, to use Stunner. And meanwhile, we're also teaching them to use Kubernetes because most of the people from the, uh, on the WebRTC community they are mostly new to Kubernetes, and the, the one of the reasons that that uh, of of uh, or the one of the 
reasons of the of the behind most of the the issues that we see at GitHub is that they 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 really struggle uh, handling the complexities of the role based model in the gateway API. Um, so we try to make their life easier. And that's why we simplify the, the gateway API as much as possible. So our users typically do not use role-based model. I'm super happy if they at least use Kubernetes. So they're really not in the in the in the uh, situation where you know they they just you know have these in-house teams uh, and 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 uh, so we don't really need these sorts of complexities to to allow them to work together. Uh, there are no reference grants. We used to have them. We don't support them anymore. We can uh, anytime. But but this is the one was one of the major reasons why people got confused. They forgot the reference point. Um, some minor controversies. I, I mentioned these at at, uh, at at Slack, and we decided maybe these are not uh, major problems. But I, I thought I would just bring this up uh, uh, again. Maybe if someone has a comment, I would be really interested. Turn is a super strange protocol in that it's layer seven protocol. Uh, this is what we expose at layer seven, but it works basically over any layer four transport, UDP, TCP, TLS, DTLS, you name it. Uh, but the problem is that what to write into listener into the listener protocol field. Okay, we currently set this to the transport protocol that underlies turn, but people actually expect this to be turn, and then they get confused. What is now? Why? 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 This is this is like. You, you just expose a turn server, but you never really mentioned the, the, the string turn in, in any way in, the, in your gateway specification. So they, 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 they got confused by this. So maybe I think it would be nice for us at least to have a separate app protocol or something to, to just name or disambiguate the layer seven uh, protocol issues. It's not important. They, they, I, I'm, I'm really surprised by how fast most of our users grasp the main ideas of, of the gateway api they get confused but but they are still very efficient in, in working with it the other is the udp route semantics so that's the other thing that 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 usually confuses our users uh the problem is that so this is i know this is super strange but by the time our gateway sees the media traffic so they they, they see the actual turn allocation request the client already knows the IP of the pod it wants to talk to. And this is because in WebRTC, there is a signaling plane. So before any media connection and an audio video connection, the client and the server negotiates uh, the connection parameters. So like they, the server just tells the pod IP it actually is just, just assigned to, to, the, to the client. And the client actually just asks Stunner, okay, I want to talk to this pod, to that pod. So there is no load balancing in Stunner. Okay, we only just do perform ad admission control. So when is, there is a backend service in the UDP route, that basically means whether or not the client is allowed to, to talk to a particular pod via a UDP route, uh, but there is no load balancing there. They always th thought that somehow inherent to gateways and HTTP routes, there is the, there is the, the, the assumption that, that load balancing somehow happens. Uh, so if I don't know, I've used this TO quite a lot, and, and there it's it's somehow very explicit that you are doing uh, a load balancing. So the, it is very often comes up at Discord. So they, they are just inquiring, but what, what what what's happening here? What what is the, 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 I, I expect some load balancing going around here, but then I I know that this this is not the case. So this is another source of controversy. And these are our minor wish list. Uh, if you can add the TLS. This is the datagram TLS version that runs on top of UDP to protocol type, and we'd be very happy. If uh, our backend object references contained an end port field, that would be really nice because then we could handle the port ranges. Of course, we can always uh, uh, write a custom route, uh, but maybe if, if, if there's an intention to do that, I know there is this, this long standing Kubernetes issue about. Uh, uh, protocol ranges in services. And I don't know what's what the plan around that. Also, I'm 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 super interested in uh, in the fate of UDP routes. Will it uh, 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 get promoted to to beta or or v, v1 or or so? What's the plan around here? And basically, that's all. So um, thanks for listening. That was extremely interesting. That's cool. Oh, happy. <laughs> 
Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I was curious. Um, you said that your users were confused by the roles. I'm wondering yeah. to what extent they ended up having to be exposed because I think we tried as hard as possible to make it so that the default, you kind of don't need to mention any of it. Like for example, reference grant. Yeah, sure. Uh, so one thing that uh, that is typical uh, in our setup, if you, if you uh, that the media servers are deployed in the separate namespace. So this, this is fairly usual, usual. And then every backend reference stunner is basically uh, a cross namespace. Uh, uh, reference uh, from Stunner uh, to the to the actual media server pool, which is deployed. Other so so theoretically, you would need a reference grant there. Uh, but but I think that the, the 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 thing that really confuses them is is the attachment of UDP routes and and gateways and uh, basically routes to gateways. So there are lots of dancing around uh, until these things. Uh, we, 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 yeah, like originally, I used to have a, a quick implementation where we actually introduced all the gateway side uh, rules and also the the uh, the, the routing side uh, uh, parent traps with the with the full semantics. But but then even even my own coworkers uh, got confused by that. So we removed everything from the gateways. Gateways are now running with the default. Uh, 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 preferences, so everything from the same namespace can attach uh, to our gateways. That was a, a major simplification, and I think since then uh, we get much less trouble with that. Mm, and parent traps are also super simple, so only just from the same namespace. And this this kind of like helped us uh, simplify enough, uh, but still, just just the last week, uh, we 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 trashed a, a bug there. Someone misconfigured this, uh, and then the, you know the problem is that that like I have to tell them that 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 statuses in UDP routes and gateways are a thing. So okay, that's what was, that's what I was actually my first question when we even stopped this was is it like a problem where they like they there are no statuses being made in that implementation yet, but it sounds like there are, and it's just hard for yeah, them to get to them. Yeah, it's it's somehow <laughs> not the common knowledge that that statuses are. So much of an interesting and useful resource. Uh, Statuses are kind of a, I would say, just a mess in general across a lot of different things that actually <laughs> are implemented yeah. on Kubernetes. But um, it's interesting. So you just turned off the reference grants entirely, basically don't implement them at all anymore. Yeah. It's an interesting yeah, thing. I think we'd want to. I think we would want to come back around and try to think about your use case and your experience as a way to see if there's improvements that we could make there to make it so that that isn't the result that we get. Um, but I, definitely I, I definitely understand why reference grants are there. And, and when you actually have the role-based you know, organizations, this makes a lot of sense, but it's so simple to forget. It's so simple to, to or, or even just just, just you know, have a, a reference grant and completely forget about that. And it's so I don't know what to do about that. And if you're good in Kubernetes, you will easily just find the st the status that <laughs> tells you that okay, this reference grant is missing. But but somehow I still feel that. that uh, so I know why this is, and I don't really have any better ideas how to handle this. But somehow it, I still feel that. That, that that this is this is this might be a major source of errors. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just to add on to what Bowie said in the chat, the cap to have reference grant move under SIG auth and become a standard thing across all of Kubernetes and not just the yeah. API just merged today. So there is a lot of momentum oh. to basically make reference grant a, a core thing uh, in Kubernetes. So uh, this feedback definitely is helpful and we should we should keep talking about this you know after this meeting and talk about uh uh areas of opportunity to make improvements there yeah it somehow confuses this this so so people who are really new to this this whole thing it's just maybe uh, too much to take yeah. uh, it's it's surprisingly nice and 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 it's, it's nice to see how quickly they start to understand 
gateways and rounds. So this, this is this is really in, you know these are abstractions which are somehow very convenient. Yeah, that was somehow very good reference grants. I, I don't know if these are, but but I so anyway. Yeah. Can, can I comment on on the load balancing confusion? Sure, sure, sure. Um, I don't I don't know the stun protocol, or, but um, like the back end. Oh, I'm sorry, the UDP route that you have up right now. Uh, the UDP route. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, so it points to a back end, right? So that back end usually fronts like a pool of pods, right? Yeah. So I can kind of see how that leads to the, that confusion of like, oh, should that service be load balancing between the pods? But it sounds like you said the stun protocol establishes the relationship. And so there's no like, oh, you know, this the the service will load balance. Uh-huh. Is, that, is yes. that something like the difference between the configuration of gateway API and the way the stun protocol works? No, I think this has nothing to do with gateway APIs, but much rather the fact that so just imagine an HTTP service, you no know, client connects to your gateway and tells this is like you know the service that I want, you know, like and, and then they get load balance to whichever pod, and then right. the pod will perfectly be, you know, in the position to serve the request. Now, what happens in WebRTC? It's completely different, different because we the, the the major thing here that we are doing out of band signaling. So before anything happens, there is this application server stuff, which is basically a web server. But but the first thing that that you do is that the browser opens a WebSocket to the application server and they they start uh, discussion there. I'm 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 a client. I want to register with you, and then I would like to join to this and that room. And then my I'm I'm this and that user, and I want you to set up a media uh, processing pipeline for you at your media server that hand, handles this room. Uh, and then please attach me to this conference. These are my references, and give me a turn credential or a turn server that I can use to connect to this media server. And then the application server just just. Uh, sends down instructions to the media server. It already knows which media server this uh, room is assigned to. And this is a stateful media server. The only, so the, like there is this media server pool, but media servers are not created equal in the sense that they maintain uh, internal state with respect to the rooms that are currently assigned to them. So when the client actually wants to join a room, it has to connect to that particular media server pod that is actually just hosting the, the, the room the client wants to connect to. So it has to uh, send to a particular pod. Uh, and this is this is completely different from HTTP where everything is, you know, restful and inbound. Here, everything is non-restful, fully, fully stateful and out of bed. Uh, one, of the, one of the main goals of of, 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 of the startup and one of the visions that we have in this small startup is, is to slowly try to move this, this use case closer to the cloud native principle. Ex externalizing state from media servers, this to some extent already happening, but, but so that media servers would be equal, so that any media server could process any uh, 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 any room and any client, and so so the, these sorts of things. But this will be a very slow progress. Uh, currently, I think WebRTC is anything but cloud native. Uh, but but we know. I think we have some good ideas how to make this uh, uh, more cloud native in this sense. Would you mind going to your wish list page for a second? Oh yeah, sure. So I think there's potentially opportunity for the first one. I would say put in an issue for that and we can kind of mm -hmm. discuss that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's going to be a little rough if you're literally the only person who wants it, but yeah, an, issue, an, issue or, an issue or a discussion is still fine to like get the conversation going and it may attract uh -huh. people that aren't coming to the calls to say, hey, actually I need this as well. Um, the second one... 
Well, it looks like there's an ongoing conversation for that one. So I think, um, as I remember, this was something that we temporarily tabled because adding endpoint endport was not a backwards incompatible chain. So we, we basically said, hey, well, we can just resurrect this at any point. Again, getting additional support would help that, but you know, bump that thread. And then for the last one, this is actually mm -hmm. close to my heart. So t I'm I'm currently one of my charges right now is to focus on uh, the progression of uh, layer four in Gateway API. So TCP route, UDP route, mm -hmm. uh, and to some degree TLS route. And so I have every expectation that you're going to see the progression that you're looking for there. I don't know how fast it's going to be, but getting this kind of like feedback and this kind of like uh, a presentation uh, showing that it's being used helps that it definitely helps to to move things along. And so thank you for kind of coming and showing this to us today. This definitely made me feel good because I was hoping that there were like some, you know, more layer four stuff. We don't talk about it a lot. Uh, and this was definitely um, one of the more intricate implementations I've seen, uh, despite not actually using a lot of gateway API, but I, I, I think it was just very cool. So thank you. Yeah. Does anybody else have any more questions? If we had questions, what's the best way to send them? Yeah, uh, I will share the, the slides and give you the, uh, and then I, I have all my pointers there, but I'm also Gabor on, on, uh, on the Slack. So you can write me anytime. And there is also the uh, so just just look at Spanner and, uh, on GitHub, and uh, you will find all the necessary pointers there. Uh, uh, happy to help anytime. Cool. Thank you very much. All right. Sorry, I muted myself for a second. Um, we have another agenda item uh, that's minor, but you kind of picked. A, oh, we got two agenda items now. You kind of picked a good day for uh, for it because we didn't have much agenda, so you got to kind of do the whole thing there. Um, we do have just a uh, a heads up. I I think Philip put this in, but like a heads up, there is a conversation going on in Slack right now about egress. There will likely be a actual like more involved. Um, uh, bullet point item for us to talk about it next week, but not quite this week. If you're interested in egress, uh, jump into the Gateway API Slack channel and jump into that thread. It would be very helpful to make sure everybody who's interested kind of uh, gets in there and starts talking. Um, and then, and I think, go I ahead. Think one more thing to add to that: it, it's sure. going to be raised at the next. Um, um, I always blank on the name of it. The, the gamma. The, uh, Gamma, thank you. Yeah, uh, at the tomorrow. next Gamma meeting, so you know we'll start looping them in too, and this will end up probably at least temporarily broadening out. Um, Roger that. Thank you, Philip. Uh, Dave Sudia, you wanted to talk about a TCP route example for IoT. Yeah, just so since you're looking for, sorry, I'm just cooking dinner, so I, <laughs> I was, but I was like, I heard, and I was like, oh, I got, I got a. Layer four example, we have um, a number of people using emissary who, you know, they shift over to Envoy Gateway one day, uh, but it's, I think it'll be a high priority for us, you know, um, who use TCP routes because they do internet of things. Like there's a trucking company that like tracks trucks across the country and every one of their devices pings through and it, uh, they purely use TCP routes um, or our equivalent of it, uh, TCP mappings. Uh, so yeah, that's, but that's another, uh, like it's low level, you know, uh, I was on a really interesting call with one of them trying to figure out how to do something because they were trying to route and there's not a lot to route off of when you're on on pure TCP. Um, but yeah, you know, so I, I don't want to take up 18 minutes talking about it, but um, that's another thing I could bring more details if you want. But since you were saying I love hearing examples, I was like, I, I've got a, I've got a good one. Yeah, no, I, I would absolutely love for you to bring an agenda item for an up upcoming uh, thing, maybe a, a demo and like a brief kind of presentation or something uh, okay. to talk about cool. it. Uh, so just so we're clear, they're they're uh, using V1 Alpha 1 TCP route in production. 
Um, I mean, so they're going through through emissary right now. So they're not going through through gateway API specifically, gotcha. but we're going gotcha. to need to to shift over at some point, and um, and that's a really critical piece of of emissary for a lot of people is the ability to send through pure TCP. Cool. Yeah, definitely would like to hear more about that. Thanks for bringing that up. All right, we still have sixteen minutes left. Um, we don't need to use them. We can close this if everybody's done. But if anybody has any last minute thing that they'd like to bring up and talk about, now would be the time. Otherwise, we can uh, all head off a little early today. All right. Thank you all and cheers, everyone. Have a good one. Bye. Have a good one.